Hey everybody, it's Katarina from Double Desserts and today I am sharing with you a super special recipe. Today we are making the best red velvet gluten-free and vegan cake that you have ever had. Can guarantee this. Now, red velvet cake, in my opinion, is just a really overrated red dyed kind of chocolatey, kind of vanilla-y cake. But it really tastes fantastic when it's done properly. On top of that, red velvet cake is called red velvet because it is super moist and velvety, which usually doesn't equate to gluten-free cakes ever. But we have cracked the code to making a wonderfully moist, super red, gluten-free red velvet cake that you are absolutely going to love. So let's get baking. So the magic ingredient in red velvet cake is buttermilk. To make our buttermilk, first things first, we're going to take our non-dairy milk, preferably soy, and we're gonna mix it in with some apple cider vinegar. At this point, I'm also going to add in our gel red food coloring. This is to ensure that all of the molecules of our cake get evenly coated with a lot of red food coloring. Into your large mixing bowl, you're going to add in your sunflower oil, hot black coffee, or a double shot of espresso is ideal, some very high quality Madagascar bourbon vanilla extract, and some cocoa powder. Once you've whisked all of that together, you're going to add in your red buttermilk and whisk it again, and then add in your baking mixes. Now I'm making a five layer cake because I'm feeling super extra. By all means, you can use a single baking mix and get a beautiful three layer cake out of this and it'll be absolutely awesome. Once your batter is ready to go, you're going to take your six inch cake tin. Uh, you can also do an eight inch or 12 inch, it's totally up to you, but we're using a six. And you're going to pour in a small amount of batter, just enough to cover the bottom. And you're gonna bake it at 350 degrees for approximately 15 minutes. Even though it's done when the cake is risen and if you touch the top of it very carefully, it feels firm. It doesn't feel like there's any wet batter underneath. You're gonna use a knife to loosen it from the edges, flip it over, and you're gonna repeat this all over again until you have no more batter left. With your baked cake, it is essential that you freeze it at least for six hours so it's easier to work with. In the meantime, let's make our cream cheese frosting. In my mixing bowl, I have a combination of non-dairy butter and non-dairy cream cheese that I'm going to whip on a high speed until it is well combined. Once everything has been whipped and is light about two minutes, I'm going to spoon in on a low speed, a quarter cup at a time, of some icing sugar. And I'm going to continue doing this until the icing forms a stiff peak and can hold its own shape when I pull the beater out of the bowl. And now to ice this piece of the cake. It is highly recommended that you have proper tools to ice a cake if you want some nice results. I'm talking a revolving cake stand as well as an offset spatula and you would also be best suited with a cake scraper. Um, you can find all of these on DeltaDesserts.com. We have links to the ones that we use that we absolutely rely on and they will help you make this cake look professional. To ice this cake, you're going to take your cake board and put a little smear of that frosting right on the bottom to make sure your cake doesn't move. You're then going to unwrap your first layer of cake, put it on the bottom, and then you're gonna pipe around the edge of the cake one layer, kind of like a barricade of frosting. Now I'm going to fill the interior of my cake with chocolate ganache. If you'd like the recipe for the chocolate ganache, you can find it in the description below, or you can click the link above to our cream egg brownies, which will walk you through how to make a delicious chocolate ganache. In addition to the chocolate ganache, I'm also going to put on the piece de resistance, some crushed macadamia nuts. Once you have filled the top layer of your cake there, you can put a little bit more frosting on top just to make sure that your second layer of cake sticks to the first layer. And then you're gonna repeat this. Cake, barricaded frosting, chocolate ganache, macadamia nuts, a little dab of frosting, cake. Once you've reached that top layer of cake, it is time to make the crumb coat. So you're gonna pipe a large amount of frosting onto the top of your cake and along the sides. You don't need to cover the entire cake because this is a very thin layer of icing that's going to keep all the crumbs in your cake while you do that final frosting. While this is happening, your cake is actively defrosting and this could lead to bulging cakes or cakes going lopsided, which is actually what happened to my cake. Um, it was very hot in my studio with multiple lights. But there is a way to fix this, which I will show you how to do in a second. But regardless, be quick, get that crumb coat on, throw it in the fridge. Once your crumb coat has solidified and it has been at least an hour, you're going to repeat the frosting process. You're gonna fill up that piping bag, pipe around the entirety of the cake in a beautiful, even layer, and you're gonna take your cake 
icing scraper and you're just gonna rotate the cake board while holding the scraper at 90 degrees to the best of your abilities. Now, if you've got a slanted cake like I do or a bulging cake, fret not. This is where the magic comes in. Figure out where on your cake there is a bulge and take your cake scraper, or if you don't have one, something that's like at 90 degrees that's fairly sturdy and see what it would take to make sure that that side is completely straight. What I like to do is put on more icing on the side that is slanted to kind of make it a straight line and then I will scrape it very carefully and very evenly around the entire cake. So that side is going to end up a bit more compacted with frosting compared to the other side, but it will look more straight, which in the end of the day is what's really important. Do your best with this, it takes some time. Making a cake look perfectly straight is really time consuming and it's not worth your time to just sit there and spend hours. Get her done, get her back in the freezer. So once you finish that, really the rest is up to you. I made a nice white chocolate that I'm going to drizzle on the top and side of the cake and I'm also gonna paint this white chocolate gold because why not? It's gonna be fantastic. If you'd like to know how to make your own non-dairy white chocolate drip, as well as some gold luster dust paint, check out the description below or in our blog post following up on how to make this cake so you can also repeat this exact measure. Doing a drip also helps hide the fact that your cake is a little bit slanted or a little wonky, so I highly recommend doing them. They really do save the day and take it to the next level. Amazing as the cake is and the icing and the ganache, you know what makes this cake? The freaking macadamias. Those things are so yummy in this cake. It gives you that little extra crunch while being creamy. Mmm, so good. I give this cake a solid 20 out of 10, as in so freaking delicious. You need to go and make this pronto. And there you have it. Even though this cake requires multiple steps and I went a little overkill with the five layers, this cake is actually super easy to put together and worth the work because it is so delicious. This could also be made into cupcakes very, very easily. Instead of putting it into the cake layers, you can just pour them into cupcake cups and make beautiful cupcakes. Thank you so much for watching another one of our lovely recipe videos. I really hope you enjoyed this one because I enjoyed making this cake and eating it. It was really good. If you like this video and want to see more of Dalton desserts, please show us your love. Hit that subscribe button and stay up to date with everything Dalt Up Desserts. And if you do decide to make a delicious red velvet cake using our recipe, do share it on social media and tag us at Dalt Up Desserts Baking so we can share it with everybody in our social network and show them what they're missing. Thanks so much for watching.